The One Odd Day podcast proudly presents a 1950s cigarette commercial. While the One Odd Day podcast does not support cigarette smoking, we do however encourage you to light up some kush, or whatever other strand you may fancy, and get as high as you possibly can. Enjoy. Friends, here's a wonderful Christmas gift for anyone who smokes, because it says, Merry Christmas and Happy Smoking, 200 times. Yes, 10 packs of those better-tasting Luckies, all done up for Christmas in a beautiful carton, created just for Lucky Strike by the famous designer, Mr. Raymond... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the One Odd Day Podcast. I'm your host, M.A. Nassif. A lot going on in the world right now. Uh, mainstream media seems to be really focused on the Trump impeachment. It's a really big thing. Um, third president in history, I believe, to ever be impeached. Clinton was impeached before, you know, uh, Nixon was the Watergate scandal. Basically, Clinton was a blowjob and then him lying about receiving the blowjob. This is a bit different. This is basically a president withholding aid to a foreign country for his own personal agenda. People lost lives behind this. And I just think it's gonna be interesting how this plays out on the political landscape. In other news, we just recently had uh, two gentlemen who Robbed the UPS truck. U- 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 UPS truck. Then police on a high-speed chase cross county. The high-speed chase ended with police firing off over 200 rounds, killing um, not only the two assailants but killing the U- U- driver and uh, an innocent bystander who was at the four-way stop at the time. Police are currently being investigated by the FBI for maybe using excessive force. Um, we haven't seen anything like that, at least to my knowledge, uh, ever where you have a hostage situation and the police didn't even bother to try to, you know, de-escalate the situation. They just decided to fire off. And, you know, it's unfortunate the way that it ended. Uh, The incident took place in South Miami. Uh, The gentlemen involved who committed the robbery were from Overtown. I happen to know one of the gentlemen involved. I didn't know him extremely well for about four years. Uh, From what I knew of him, he was a good gentleman. A respectable gentleman uh, never gave me any reason to think otherwise. Someone who actually knows him very well is Twin. Uh, we're gonna get Twin on the phone, uh, see what he thinks of the whole situation, as well as maybe getting to know Twin a little better. Twin has an interesting story. Um, let's give Twin a call, see what he has to say. Yo. Yeah, what's going on, bro? Just cooling, man. Stuck in all this traffic. Got to swing through town real quick. Twin, how has your holiday season been thus far? How was your Thanksgiving? What the fuck? Man, see what that was? I just heard a robot. Man, what the fuck you got going on over there, man? Twin, I'm not a robot. I'm Cynthia. More specifically, I'm a ThoughtBot 3.5. Programmed with a prototype artificial intelligence software, drafted by Edward Snowden himself. I have the ability to fact check things for you as well as answer any questions you may have. Man, you gotta be fucking kidding me. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, man, that's Cynthia, man. She um she's a thought bot. Thought bot three point five. Um she's here to fact check. She's here for she's here for the bullshit too. Now that we've all been introduced, twin. How has your holiday been thus far? Oh, everything was marvelous. Ate a lot. No, hey, man. I had fucking turkey with fucking boiled peanuts mixed together like a fucking gumbo or some shit. Twin, I think you should take this time to properly let our listeners know a wee bit about yourself. You were born in Miami, Florida. Is this correct? No, not born and raised. I was born in Queens, New York. And I probably left probably like seven. What part of Miami did you move to? Uh, Liberty City. Liberty City, my golly. From what I've heard, Liberty City is fucking nuts. And do you remember Miami's music scene at that time? Yeah, I hit the streets real early. Uh, I remember Uncle Al vivid, like it was yesterday. Uncle Al, 
Rest in peace, is a Miami legend. Is it fair to say that you were from the same hood as him? Really, like Uncle Al, the same projects that he was maneuvering in, I grew up in, called Sugar Hill Apartment, right off 71st and 15th Avenue. And how about Miami's drug scene? Was lean popular back then the way it is now? Nah, back then it was just crack cocaine. That was like all in the neighborhood, crack cocaine, jazz resource, but the choice of drug that was popping and everybody was getting notarized off was crack cocaine. To my knowledge, Convertible Bert was the first to introduce crack cocaine in that area. Am I correct? That's not, he's not the first, but he's one of them. Okay. I've also noticed over the last decade a lot of gang affiliation within Miami. Was it like this back then? No such thing. No such thing back in the days. Never heard of it. Never heard of Bloods or Trips. Just Latin King, Wilo, Disciple, Side by Side, Pope, stuff like that. And then to be honest with you, there was no black people in them games at that time. That was like all Spanish games. And the reason why I'm familiar with that, because we used to meet up in a juvenile detention center. And there was no black people in there throwing up gang signs, bloods, crips, and all that. But you seen the Latin Kings and the Wilos and all them, they would throw up signs and they would go at it. But that would be like Latin on Latin. And, and the Cubans and the Latins, they weren't killing each other. They're just a fist fight. It is what it is. So now you can see how time done change. When the blacks got into the game, they're killing each other, black on black. Do you remember your first time getting arrested? What was it for? Uh, possession of crack cocaine. Does this mean that you were selling crack? Yeah, I was pushing them for somebody else. They had them pitted in my hand, and, you know, I ain't know nothing about the dope game, but, hey, you know, I, I always had to hustle. So, you know, I had them pitted in my hand, and I was going up to cars. I didn't care who I was serving and messed around and served the undercover cop. And they jammed me up. I had, like, 25 uh, nickel rocks bagged up. Do you happen to remember your age at the time? At that time, I probably like, like 12, 12, 13. You were just a young lad at the time. According to your arrest records, you also led police on a high-speed chase. Is this true? Yeah, that was in 96 when uh, uh, we was on the beach and uh, the police were there waiting on us. It says that you wrecked the car and flew off of the expressway. Yeah, that was the times uh, while we was in the house, we chased. My co-defendant kept jumping on the side of me because the police kept pulling out the gun, talking about he going to shoot. So out of nowhere, a hero come out of nowhere and ram the back of the car and spin, hit a wall. Everybody jumped out running, and the dog got me and bit my arm up. Ouch, that must have hurt. How many were you in the car? Four deep. Who was driving? I'm driving. Not to change the subject, but I want to talk about your father. He was locked away for most of your childhood. What did he go to prison for? Uh, murder. Uh, back in like the 80s, he had a, was affiliated with the shower posse. As far as I know, murder. And did your family tell you your father was locked up? No, no, no. They hid that from me. I didn't know until like later on down the stretch as I got older. Where did your mother tell you he was? Nah, she was saying that he was going to Jamaica. I can't imagine how betrayed you must have felt. Before we continue, for our listeners who may not know, can you please explain what the Shower Posse is? Oh, the Shower Posse is a Jamaican, the tourist Jamaican gang. And back in the 80s, um, they was uh, responsible for trafficking, dope, racketeering, conspiracy, murders, you know, all types of that nature. Do you feel like once he left, that's when you really started to make your way into the streets? Y yeah, once he left, it was over. So, you know, we hit the streets out there head first. Because, you know, without uh, lacking that father figure in your household, 
so you know it makes you wander off. You have a twin brother who is currently incarcerated. How long is he away for? Oh, he's in prison serving a life sentence. He's serving a life sentence. According to his arrest record, no victim was harmed during the crime. How is he doing a life sentence? Okay, the situation with him was it's a restaurant, like a pizza, but it's a Franco pizza. So they went up in there and they robbed the place. So whoever robbed the place, because he said he didn't do it, whoever robbed that place, they took him in a high speed chase and which they jumped out on Liberty City and just so happened my brother and his friend, they was in the area. So the police got mad because the people had got a car and got away that they jammed in and took them with the charge. It's a bit bothersome that child molesters generally receive less time than your brother did. Please tell me, how old was he when he went in, and how old is he now? He went in when he was 19. He's 44 now. Forgive me as I cry, and take a moment to have a breakdown over your brother's situation. <laughs> Your brother has been serving a life sentence, since he was 19. For a robbery where no one was hurt. Our judicial system is flawed at a systemic level. All of our freedoms are at jeopardy. The male brain is not completely developed until around the age of 25. Because we live in a society that incentivizes incarceration through the private prison industrial complex. We've allowed for enormous portions of lives to be lost to the greed of the owners of these private prison companies. How did you spend your holidays in the chain gang? Oh man, that was the worst. That was the worst because you know you can't be with your loved ones. But you know every day was a spin, so you know, every day got to roll on. You know, that, that come with the territory. See, when I was up Obama, Obama wasn't even president. I felt like, wow, okay, we got a, a black brother in the office, so, you know, things gonna get better. Are you saying that Obama brought you hope? Yeah, he gave me hope. Since we are on the subject of politics, do you support Donald Trump? Nah, I don't really fuck with him. I mean, he got some great things he did, but I don't really fuck with him. But as far as business-wise, yeah, I give it to him. He's on his shit on that. I mean, from the stories I hear that he took, uh, from what his granddad left him or whatever, and he's been flipping, flipping, flipping every since. All right, Twin, let me jump in on this one. Who would you say is a better businessman in general? Would you say Trump or Hove? Him or, him or Jay-Z? Him or Jay-Z? I'm going to say Trump. Okay, so why do you go with Trump? Because if you look at his fortunes that we do by statistics, the only thing about him, he just don't know how to talk to people. But as far as business, I, I get on his business. All right, see, I beg to differ, and here's why. When you take, like, Hove and you take Trump, you're talking about two different success stories. You're talking about one person who was given um, maybe what's the equivalent of $10 million today. Um, someone who went bankrupt several times throughout the course of his career. Someone who relatively hasn't had any new form of income when, it, when you're talking about new money. It's all these old money methods of developing wealth you know hove is someone who came out of marcy projects uh someone who pushed forward the envelope of what an entertainer is expected look what he's done for culture in general yeah you're right though i didn't look at it like that though but yeah you're right yeah you know that's something that i'm just really annoyed by i feel like everybody's always talking about oh yeah, he might not say the smartest things or he might not be the best person. And, you know, he's a little out there, but he's just such a good businessman. You know, the man's just such a good businessman. But then, like, if that's the only credential that we're counting, like, he's not the best businessman. There's so many other 
more intelligent people that we can have running this world so if that's the one credential that we're going to count well then let's let's talk business let's talk business in general um if that's the case then hold for president <laughs> right yeah. all right so while cindy's still pulling herself together you know i know you fairly well so that's why i said i was just gonna let her take over the interview you know introduce everybody at the same time but um you know i know some of the grimy stories even the stuff that we can't talk about here um you got shot, didn't you? Yes. Was that before or after prison? That was before prison. Do you feel? Would you feel comfortable talking about that? Right, and it was a situation where me, my homeboys, we had went on this caper. So when we went out on this caper, we had then got away with the money, dope, whatever, whatever. So then this guy who was with us which was my homeboy in the back seat. He had them flipped out. He had them bugged out, got paranoid. So then he took the gun to my back of my um, head, poked it, and was like, hey, look, I got this on the side right here. Pull over. So I'm like, man, you tripping. So I just kept riding, whatever, whatever. So then he's like, hey, man, you think I'm playing? So I'm like, man, whatever. So as I drive a shot ball, boom, that's when he hit me in the back of the neck. So once he hit me in the back of the neck, the car automatically wrecked out. When it wrecked out, everybody got out. He hit one dude, which was my passenger. He hit him in the knee, and the other dude, he didn't shoot him. So I got shot in the back of the neck. My other homeboy got hit in the knee, and the other one got away. So in the midst of that, uh, by me running, and I'm paranoid, and I'm running because I don't want to get another shot, uh, the bullet traveled, hit my lung, shattered my lung, and that's when I fell off, fell out. I woke up, I was in the trauma unit. And what ended up happening to the other people who were in the vehicle with you? Uh, the one who got shot, he, he went to the hospital with me, and the other one that made it alive, uh, I, I never heard from him again. Where did all this happen? What part of the city? Uh, like off of 9th Street. Getting off the expressway. It happened right on the expressway, right on the ramp, getting off. That's crazy. And what do you think made him flip on you like this? Like, why did he just spaz out? Really, really par- paranoia. Because, you know, he done did so much uh, dirt back in his day that, you know, he just probably got paranoid and thought that I was out to get him or something. All right, speaking of paranoia, I can only imagine that from everything you've been through, the the shootout, the the prison stuff, you know, the family trauma, I can only imagine you have to suffer on some level to some degree of PTSD. You know, um, do you ever feel like this? Do you ever feel like you have some you, some paranoia from the situation? Oh, oh, man, probably. So that took out, that went a long time with me. Oh, you know, I had to hear a bang, and then I'd be paranoid, and I'd be like, oh, shit. And it all come back to me again. I hear something loud go off, and it'll come back. Well, you're definitely blessed, you know, and I could definitely imagine, you know, you're so many years removed from it. Is it safe to say that you've hung it up? Yeah, I gave a game. I retired. Yeah, I hung it up. I did a Michael Jordan. So no matter what you do in life, you got to retire. Everybody retire at the game. You only go so long. Like, just gave it up and I just said, I, right, you know what, too old for this. Not going back to prison because, you know, prison is crazy. They do what they want to do. Wow. All right, what about, like, bugs? Like, what was one of the most bugged out things that you saw when you were in there? Oh, the mental aspect of it? Uh, you got a lot of crazy people in there, man. People just do things out the norm. Like, one day, example, one day, uh, like, for a laundry, they bring your clothes in, so I would, and they put them on the table. So I was looking for my clothes and come to find out when I go to chow, the dude in front of me got my clothes on, and um, I can't do nothing about it because he's a mental uh, patient person. Wow, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, in front of me in the chow line. 
And I can't even say anything. I'm like, oh, this is the bullshit. And then it's not even like it's it's dope shit. It's the same shit that you're wearing. It's a prison uniform. They all look the same. 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 Same shit that you're wearing. It's a prison uniform. They all look the same. Damn, I was really hoping that you would share with them the Vinny story. Oh, wow. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, uh, oh, man. The reason why I'm laughing, right? Uh, it was this dude named Vinny, but I ain't gonna go into that. But <laughs> <laughs> I can't even word that. But they won't even come out. <laughs> you know, just, it's just the shit you see in prison, man. That how you traumatized later on down the stretch and shit. Well, to make a long story short, well, I give you a little bit of it. The showers is like open days, so. You know, you go in there and take the shower, whatever, whatever. So, so they're like, hey, man, uh, Vinny down there sticking his shampoo up his ass, a shampoo bottle. Hi, twin. I'm back. As the two of you are talking, I couldn't help notice how comfortable you both sounded. May I ask where you know each other from? Oh, man, me and the sea, we go way back. That's the big homie. That's my dog. We was in the trenches. <laughs> yeah, man, we go back, bro. Um, met Twin when at a pivotal point in my life. I was a young man, uh, still in my early 20s. Uh, you know, we both rose from those trenches. And uh, we were both comrades of the same struggle for a while. And, you know, I, I know you're doing well, Twin, but why don't you tell the people, man? Tell the, let, let them know, you know, you're doing well. Especially all things considered. Yeah, I'm doing real good. Good paying job. And leave my family. That's awesome. Def happy to hear that, man. Definitely happy to hear that. And how's your brother doing? Have you spoken to him lately? Yeah, uh, he's in the box right now. So I ain't talked to him in like a good eight months. You know, and lastly, before I let you go, we got to talk about Stank. Um... You know, I didn't know him as well as you knew him. Uh, I recently found out that you actually knew him pre-prison. You actually knew him uh, from the streets. Uh, could we touch on that real quick? Okay, man, Stan, we go way back, like, from Overtown. Like, uh, we were, like, in the trenches over there. He was off one part of the town, and I was off the other side. And then uh, we had to met up in prison in Moore Haven. And then we had chopped it up, you know, vibe and whatever, whatever. It used to be working out. I used to be working out. But uh, one thing about him, he's very intelligent, real smart dude, quiet, you know, um, quick to listen. And I, I just can't believe that he had got caught up like that. Yeah, why don't you let the people know um, basically who Stank was and, like, what kind of a person he was? Yeah, I mean, to describe him, I describe him as a genius. He's a, he's a genius. I would think that, like, because he's real business-minded. He was teaching people how to get their GEDs, and, you know, he was uh, teaching people business and accounting and all that. So, you know, I would look at him at least, you know, I got to give that to him. Genius. Have you spoken with Stacy? How's he doing? I mean, I thought he was being taken at hard, but, you know, he, he's, a, he, he's keeping that shit G. Yeah, but you know, at the end that. of the day, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, we all got a breaking point. He probably just ain't reached that breaking point yet. Yeah, man, it's a real unfortunate situation, man. The whole thing is just super unfortunate. Uh, definitely send my regards to Stacy if you talk to him. Any last words you want to let the people know before we get out of here? The most valuable thing I learned was my freedom. Never take that for granted again. And learn, and another thing I learned is, you know, life about choice. So, you know, you know how that go from there. Twin, it was more than a pleasure meeting you. And I look forward to working with you and Seif towards the mission. I love the resilience of your story and how positive you remained through it all. All right, Twin, as always, man, I appreciate you checking in. Um... Glad to hear you're doing well. Uh, prayers up for your brother. 
Yeah, man, let's start this year off right, man. Let's get this podcast going. Uh, let's get the one odd day movement out there. Okay, then, homie. You already know, bro. One. You know, as you spend time with your fam during a special time of year, I encourage everyone to take time and appreciate what you have, whether it be a little bit or a lot. Never forget that chances are nine times out of ten, there's someone out there doing worse than you are. Lastly, it's so easy to get caught up in putting money before so many other things. You know, we forget sometimes the most important things aren't money. It's health, freedom, love, God, family. You know, so many things are more important than money. We heard from Twin, someone who survived shootouts, getting shot, blotched robberies. He spoke on his father killing someone, then being gone and out of the picture. His brother, who's currently serving a life sentence for robbing a pizza joint. A pizza joint at 19. No one was hurt or injured during the incident, yet the same system turns around and sentences a frat boy. Brock Turner, six months in jail for sexually assaulting an unconscious girl. As always, the topics discussed tonight shouldn't be your gauge as to what this podcast is about. This is the One Odd Day podcast, and anything and everything worth being brought to the table will be brought to the table. Everything's related. Can't wait till we speak on certain subjects, and please believe we will go there. Everything from JFK, extraterrestrial technology, private military industrial complex, private prison systems, narco culture, art, music, and politics, porn. Everything's related. I'm M.A. Nassif, and it's been more than a pleasure. Want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. Happy New Year. Peace.